My name is Massimo Polidoro, I am from Italy and I am the head of the Italian Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims on Pseudoscience. I've been uh, very lucky to be James Randi's apprentice when I was young. James Randi was uh, the preeminent uh, investigator of psychic claims. Everybody was also a magician. So he had uh, used his expertise in magic and debunking fraudulent phenomena like spoon benders, psychic surgeons, healers of every kind. But he was also instrumental in uh, introducing me to using scientific method in investigating extraordinary claims. When I was a kid, I was fascinated by all that was uh, magic and paranormal, and I was uh, intrigued by the idea of uh, extraterrestrial ghosts and all the kinds of paranormal claims that were very popular when I was growing up. So I was interested also in how people were easily deceived. I was so intrigued by the whole thing because it really helped me understand how science worked. And it allowed me to understand how to approach extraordinary claims, asking for facts, asking for proof, and not believing things that just because they are nice to be believed in. Today, my main mission I see it as spreading critical thinking and scientific mentality. Aside from debunking extraordinary claims, fake news, frauds of every kind, the most important thing is to help especially young people develop a critical approach to life and help them learn how to ask the right questions and learn how not to be deceived themselves. So this is what we do all through Italy and we do it in various uh, ways. We have, of course, uh, uh, social presence, but we go into school. We have uh, an, an agreement with the Italian Ministry of Education. During the lockdown months here in Italy, there was constantly crazy idea coming out, some conspiracy theory. And so I was constantly explaining, investigating, debunking all these absurd ideas, especially when they tried to diffuse the idea that uh, it was not a real virus, that, that it was not necessary to take precautions, that there were already uh, solutions to it. For example, one of the most absurd ideas is that of the flat earth, of course, but uh, incredibly there's people who believe in this. Or today is a QAnon conspiracy theory. Even here, there are many believing that there is this uh, hidden war behind the scenes where President Trump is battling with the cabal of politicians and who are all devil worshippers and so on. It's an absurd idea, but many believe it, and uh, as well as uh, those who do not believe that we've ever been to the moon. It's a way of uh, trying to understand a complex world and try to think that they have the instruments to understand what is going on when in reality they don't. At the moment, I am conducting actually a series on the Kennedy assassination. which is a very lengthy investigation, a very detailed one, because uh, you have to discuss and go very, very deep into each claim, and you have to show how you get to the facts, because it is very easy to get trapped into fascinating conspiracy theories. They say that the disparity of shadows, a straight nose shadow from the nose, and an angle body shadow proves without a doubt that this head was superimposed on this body. The murder of President John F. Kennedy remains, after nearly 30 years, the crime of the century. Most Americans did not believe or support the verdict of the Warren Commission initially, and now more than three in four, according to all recent samplings of public opinion, think some conspiracy was involved. When you start going deeper and you start to uh, examine the facts and get to the real documents and uh, photographs and the films and so on, you find that reality is quite different from the conspiracy theories. First of all, look at the inside the wells of the eyes, you see the same type of darkness. Under the lower lip, you see the, the darkness from the shadow. Of course, the nose is almost perfect. It's a very long shadow, which is really surprising, by the way. And my favorite part, which is on the neck, you see the shadow cutting in like exactly like you have here. So everything in this photograph is exactly consistent. If this was a fake, it would have been almost unimaginable how they could have done this in 1963. And showing this in the video, I find that it is very helpful to many people.
all claims that pertain to health present threats to people. In, in the case of COVID, there are people claiming they have solutions to health problems, and usually those are fraudulent solutions. But when one is desperate, when one has tried everything in medicine and cannot find a solution, even the absurd proposition appear to be uh, hopeful. So uh, these predators actually speculate on the need or hope that sick people usually and normally have. So these are the worst kind, of course, because uh, they usually lead these people to death without them even realizing it and with their family distressed by, by what, what is going to happen. Magic is a very interesting uh, approach to this claim because it teaches us that uh, everybody can be fooled, even scientists, even very intelligent persons, because uh, we all want to believe certain things, for one thing. And the second thing is that if you're not trained in deception, our mind leads us to believe absurd things, uh, you're probably going to be deceived yourself. I have a, a strong interest in popularizing science because this is one of the main tools that we have in order to understand the world around us. And I don't mean that you have to become a scientist, but to understand the scientific method, this is the, uh, what is important. If you do it when you're a kid, this will stay with you forever. <laughs> I have a series on my YouTube channel, which is called Stranger Stories, and it's a series investigating famous cases, like the Loch Ness Monster, King Arthur, UFOs, ghosts, uh, strange stories. In the end, we come out uh, having understood something a little more. What appeared to be unexplainable was actually unexplained, and we gave an explanation. The beauty of science is that it, it's always uh, bettering itself. It's always learning from mistakes, but the research, if it is done in a proper way and it is described in a proper way, it's possible for other scientists around the world to obtain the same results and help us understand a little better the world. My name is Amadeo Sharma. I live in Germany. I was born here, grew up in India, and now live here since about 40 years. Professionally, I'm an engineer, but what I've been doing as voluntary work, which is creating the Skeptics Group in Germany, where there's a growing spread of paranormal myths. I was fascinated by the book by Charles Berlitz about the Bermuda Triangle. And then after getting a present, the Bermuda Triangle solved by Larry Cushy. Brought me to understand that a lot of these claims that have been made don't really stand up if they're tested. So I well, cheated in a way, so we started a group to provide counter information. The central mission of our work is to promote science and critical thinking. Our focus has been always on cringe claims that usually scientists do not take up because they don't have the time for it, paranormal claims that come up. We started off doing our own experiments on dowsing, in, in which we could show that the dowsers could do just as well if they would be flipping a coin, and not better than that. And we offered anyone who was able to prove that they had powers of dowsing 10,000 US dollars. So far, nobody has been able to show that they have paranormal powers under normal test conditions. Since the COVID-19 outbreak, there have been a number of conspiracy theories, and many of them are pretty crazy. But they just follow a line that has existed for a long time. Some of the 5G conspiracy theories are really crazy because they claim that they are used to influence people and change the way they think. So it goes way off the scale. One of the things we did was brought out a special issue on conspiracy theories in our magazine, Skeptica, which is a virus of conspiracy theory. This is it. And the idea was that's our expertise. Bill Gross, prepare for the end of time. We do have a couple of people who specialize in just taking up these theories. And it takes a lot of work because the claims are made very easily. And then trying to find out what's really behind that is a very painstaking task. For example, the effect moon landing, the 9-11 conspiracy theories that were also being spread worldwide, even in Germany. One of the myths that we are most proud of busting in Germany is the myth of homeopathy, because that has had such a strong standing in Germany over decades. Fringe medicine, we call pseudo-medicine, were creating a lot of trouble in Germany. And critical to this was a doctor, Dr. Natalie Grams, who was a homeopath. 
Through changing her mind, she was able to bring a much better story into the public debate as to why homeopathy is wrong. She believed in it, and because of the science, looking into the evidence, she changed her mind. We have been able to turn the tables on homeopathy in Germany, and I think that's a major success for us. Infodemic is something that is becoming more and more relevant today. The amount of information that's available is like a pandemic. And it's one thing that we've probably not evolved to be able to handle. It's going to be the problem of the century, I would say. How are we going to deal with the flood of information that's coming across us and put them into boxes? What I think we should avoid in science is weaponizing it in the wrong way. That is, science is a wonderful instrument to tell you the way things are, but it is not in a position to tell you what you are supposed to do. We stand in danger of making science what it isn't, that is a kind of instrument of politics. I think one of the things we should learn from the pandemic is to improve the way we are in a position to communicate uncertainty in the future. I was explaining Amadeo ran yeah. this role. He's actually the founder of the whole movement that we call skeptical. Yeah, exactly. It's only the icon of the whole movement, right? Like Yuri Geller and his spoon-bending capabilities. I mean, that's what brought James Randi onto the scene. Well, Yuri Geller was an interesting personality back in the 1970s. He came out as sort of a paranormal rock star. He was invited to every TV talk show was young, was flamboyant, and he claimed he had psychic powers and he even convinced a few scientists that he really did bend spoons or guess the content of sealed envelopes thanks to some magical powers. But eventually it turned out that he was not really able to perform those uh, feats under control conditions and he quickly disappeared from view. He came back 10 or 15 years ago and appeared on TV again. And I was asked to come to explain what he's been doing. So one of the things that he had been doing was getting watches to work again. I explained that, well, if you take a lot of watches and you put them together in your hands, shaking them in the warmth, uh, some of them starts working again. They distributed about uh, 50 watches, and I was sweating blood, I tell you. <laughs> but in the end, five of those watches did start working again, so the explanation did work. I mean, if you have a lot of watches, some of them will start working again because of shaking them, even if they've been in the cupboard for decades. You, you only need a few dozens of people to create the illusion that everybody's experiencing something mysterious. Geller knew this very well and exploited it to the end. And I hope that uh, more and more kids will learn how to think critically and be less uh, swayed by illusions and uh, deceptions that their parents fall into with both feet. One of the big challenges is going to be, and um, Massimo mentioned that before, is teaching children to think critically, much more than teaching them facts. So the next generations are going to be our hope, I would say. <laughs> we know each other since, uh, what was it, 1989. So even if we don't meet that often, but we do luckily meet now and then, and we always find that, I think, Amadeo, yeah, we are the true. same wavelength. <laughs> yes, exactly. I think going out and eating spaghetti with a beer or something, that's probably something I'd like to do with Massimo if we were in the same place. Next time that we meet for a convention in Las Vegas, we may go and watch some magic show like every time I went there with for Randy or for okay. Skeptical Inquirer. And go to a place that has good pasta. Not easy, but we can try in America. <laughs> what kind of sauce would you like in your spaghetti?